sand for just a little bit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. continuously in this service tonight, Lord God. Father, I ask that you touch each and every soul here tonight. Yes, God. Touch me, Lord God, that I'm able to deliver your word, Lord God, with love and compassion, God. Let your holy boldness, Lord God, stand still. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, for freedom. Yes, God. I bind every distracting spirit now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And I loose that God's word will have free course in this place. Thank you, Father. Yes, God. That his word will be received. Glory to God. With love. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And a 
a sense of urgency. Thank you, Lord God, that we may keep moving and progressing as God is calling us to. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Father, I decrease, God. Glory to your name, God. Yes, God. That you may increase in me, God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, oh God, be acceptable in your sight, God. Help me to not do anything, Lord God, that you haven't called me to do. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Father, I ask that you bless us, God. I thank you, Father. Mm. anoint my feet oh God that I only go the places that you'll have them to go anoint my eyes father that I only see the things that you'll have me to see anoint my ears God that I may only hear the things that you'll have me to hear touch my lips God that I only speak the things that you'll have me to speak I surrender all to you father mm. Use us all tonight, God, for your glory. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. I came prepared tonight. I got my readers. <laughs> then I went and invested in a, uh, a, a large print Bible. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the Lord is so good. So y'all pray that these things don't fall off my ears. Okay, so let me tell y'all a little bit, because I thought I hinted to it the last time that I'm kind of funny. So thank you. Okay. <laughs> so it's okay, you know, I like to I like to laugh in the Lord. And I, I'm I laugh at myself because I know my weaknesses. And I know my strengths. So I'm comfortable with me. So I can kind of pick on me, right? Okay. So I want y'all to wake up now. I need y'all to wake up. What, have y'all done the uh, whole love test and everything? The, um, what is it called? The, um, um, gosh, where you have to, your love language. Have y'all done that? Yes, the five love languages. Have y'all done that? Okay, so I haven't. But... <laughs> I can tell you what my love language is. My love language, I know it's affirmation. So as long as y'all are like, oh, thank you. See what I'm saying? That just gives me so much joy. <laughs> yeah. Someone, uh, uh, just to confirm what I'm saying, one of the brothers came up to me before and said, uh, can't wait to hear you speak. Y'all know what I said to him? Did you get some of the last one? I wasn't being facetious. I wasn't being mean or anything. I said, that's my prayer. My prayer is that God help me to speak with clarity and, and, and with understanding and with knowledge, you know, and with passion. And so I pray that because in myself and in my flesh, I get really concerned about, you know, getting tongue-tied or speaking too fast. And, and I can be long-winded. I can. And, and I just don't want things to go out of order when I'm trying to communicate what God has placed on the inside of me. That's real important to me. So, so I, I was happy to hear that he, he did, and he is a scholar. He is a scholar in this word. I found that out when I heard him speak. So uh, I am honored, honored, honored. Amen. So let me put these on. Y'all just stretch your hand and say they cute. Thank you. Okay. See, I didn't even say they are cute. I said they. Okay. <laughs> Amen. To God be the glory. So, okay. So here we are. This is why I was like, okay, God, uh, just, just touch my heart with this delivery and um, uh, help me to communicate this with all the love that you gave this to me. I want y'all to receive this in love because this message, and I totally believe this, that whenever the Lord gives a word, it comes to the, it comes to the hearer first. 
So, so I received this word, and, and I had to um, uh, really began to see myself differently and everything. I had to examine myself. And so, um, so I just surrendered to God. That's my prayer tonight. Amen. Amen. So you know, we've been talking about a lot of grace, and we've been talking about mercy, and I really think these going to fall off. So in case they do, what's my backup? Right here. This one right, okay. All right, amen. We may as well just pull that on close. Amen. Y'all got to throw me some smiles or something. Okay. I was, I was looking at that, um, the Rejoice Recovering video. I'm at the, we're going to have to show it in here. And uh, 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 I was looking at Brother, um, I'm bad with names, but I always know faces. But you know I know you, but come on, come on. Norman. So Brother Norman, I was looking at Brother Norman. And uh, so everybody's smiling. <laughs> so I'm going to need to look out here and see y'all smiling. <laughs> Is that going to be all right? Yeah. Amen. Okay, so we've been talking about grace a lot. We've been hearing all these, these messages on mercy and everything. And uh, just for the past few weeks, it's been constantly coming up. And... Um, I know Pastor Ed is in this category, and, and this brother here might be in this category. Uh, 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 Dylan may be in this category, but when you're, when you're constantly, um, I know Brother Matt's in this category. When you're in this place with God where God is using you to minister and everything, he's constantly ministering something to you. Yeah. You know, and so it's kind of hard to even study the word without getting a message. So... This was already in my heart. So y'all, y'all, y'all choke this up to the Lord's timing. Amen. Um, so all these messages on, on, on grace and, and mercy, um, when we hear God repeating the same message over and over and over again, and he's using various people to communicate the same word, and he's doing it at different times, um, we should stand up and listen. Amen. We got to realize that God has a greater purpose intended for us. And so when he's sending us this word like that, that's what he says. He's preparing us for something. Amen. I'll give you an example. I was thinking about Noah. Noah, uh, um, he preached the same message for 100 years. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's, it's, it, if anybody saw Noah around his house and building this big old boat, you know, it was the same thing that it's going to rain. Come into the ark. That same message. And the Lord called him to do this when he was 500 years old. The flood came when he was 600. So all this time, and then when he was 600, the Lord said, go into the ark. So all this time, God had given him this same word. And you would think, you know, people hearing the same message over and over again, that they would have heeded to it, right? But we know how that went. We know the only ones that was obedient to the will of God was Noah and his family. Yeah. I want to be obedient. You know, I, it, it's... it's it's really my good pleasure. It's not, it's not a, um, so it's, we, we, you know, we may make God smile and I hear those types of things or what have you. I can tell you that God wants us to be obedient, yeah. Yeah. Um, but he leaves that to our choice. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So... So only Noah and his family were obedient, and, and see, and I use notes, okay, so I have to go back to my notes because there'd be something, there's some good stuff that God be giving me, and I want to make sure you get it, Brother Norman. Right. <laughs> right. So, so, okay, so, so we, we see how that turned out. And, okay, and for his purpose, for God's purpose, his own purpose, is the reason he's continuing to speak to us about grace and mercy. Today's message is no different. It's about grace and mercy. 
The title of the message is, Who is the least of these? Oh, who are the least of these? <laughs> who are the least of these? The scripture reference is Matthew 25, 32 through 46. And the main verse that we're going to focus on is verse 40. Yeah. So let me read verse 40. And the king, and I'm going to input in there the son of man. So and the king, so who is the son of man, will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. So, I want to get to that question, who are the least of these? I want to get to that in a few minutes. I want us to talk about grace first. Seems to me that a prerequisite of understanding and identifying who the least of these are, we have to understand grace and mercy. Initially, I thought, I thought my message was going to be about grace, and then <clears throat> as I continued to, um, to study and seek the Lord about it, then I started thinking, I said, okay, God, it's going to be about mercy, you know. And then as I let the Holy Spirit just begin to really pour into me, and I just surrendered even more to the Holy Spirit, then the Lord just reminded me, you can't separate the two. Grace and mercy always go together. <clears throat> yeah. Where you find God's grace, you will always find his mercy. Psalms 23 and 6 says that, Surely goodness and mercy, and I'm only going to read the first part, but surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, surely can be defined as certain, it's absolute, sustained, forever, secure. This is something that, 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 is, that is with you, that is willing to be there forever. So if we accept the prayer of David, forever will God's goodness and mercy be with us. And grace can be defined as his goodness. So we can say, surely grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Yeah. And it seems to, that, that uh, this grace and this goodness seems to refer to, we'll give you a few definitions of this, okay? And y'all just really think about this, okay? So, so I might not um, hoop or, or holler tonight. Is that all right? Okay. I even thought about, uh, I said, Lord, do I need to sit a chair right there? Right there. Now I would have seen, I would have been right in front of Brother Norman. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about grace. So grace is God's favor, his provisions, kindness. This is, these are some, some, some attributes to this, okay? Some definitions of this. God always lean towards. So grace means that God always lean toward us, okay? Extending himself toward us. A kindness by which God bestows favors even upon the ill-deserving. Yeah, did, yeah, I hear no amen. I heard one, yeah. Did y'all know that? A kind, this, is, this is what God's grace has defined us. Y'all can look these up in Strong's in the concordance there. A kindness by which God bestows favors even upon the ill-deserving. Mm -hmm. And granting pardons to sinners of their offenses and bids them acceptance of eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Oops. I don't mean to do that. I need to have a little cushion thing right there, don't I? So in, in Psalms 23 and 6, 
what David is doing. Now, keep these grace things in mind. This is some very important stuff. I don't know if you, if you thought about it, you know, that much. A lot of times when we hear the definition of grace, we, people just kind of cut it short, and they say grace means what? Unmerited favor. Yeah. But when you really think about that favor and you start thinking about the provisions and you start thinking about the fact that he accepts you when you're a sinner and that, that when you were ill-deserving, he yet granted grace, I don't know, that means a little bit something different to me. You know, I mean, it goes a little bit different, dif uh, deeper to me. Yeah, it's favor that I haven't earned. But when I get to thinking about the favor that I get that I haven't earned, man, okay. Y'all ain't sinned as much as I have, so maybe y'all ain't. Okay. All right now. Okay. So, David is demonstrating an acceptance of God's immediate attention that he gives to believers. This is so special to me. I'm talking about I was in tears when God was telling me this. I was. This is so special to me. Once you become a believer, you have goodness or grace. So, I'm just going to say grace. You have grace and mercy with you, near you, following you, even going before you. Because I just told you, so David said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I got surely, I got goodness right here, and, and, and I got mercy right here. Okay, I need y'all to catch this thing. I need y'all to catch these things because just this week, okay, well, now we're in a new week now. So just last week, I had some, some immediate situations that occurred that caused me to have to leave the place that I was at and go to my family's house to deal with an issue. Yeah. And when they called me and then they were all upset and they were all in tears and crying and everything and and. And my mother called me from California, and she's crying and things, and, and all this stuff going on. And they put in, you know, and I love my family, and I know they watch, but, you know, so, they, so we want Facebook to pray for us and everything. And so, you know, and I see it, and my mom just crying, and I said, Mama, I listened. Now, y'all going to say this is not good recovery stuff, because what I did, oh, I just thought about that. But I said, Mama. I said, I listened, and then I, I said, I tried to offer her some words of encouragement and everything, you know. But she was suffering and going through without hope. And I had to tell her, Pastor Ed, I said, Mama, hush. I did. I did. Don't y'all tell y'all mama that. Y'all going to be in big trouble. <laughs> I said, Mama, hush. Stop it. I said, stop it, Mama. I love you. I said, but I cannot allow myself to become distraught or distracted and, 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 and forget about, you know, who God is. And I said, I got faith. I said, I got faith. I said, so, I'm, I'm, I, yes, I'm sad, and I'm dealing with that sadness, but every time I think about the sadness, you know what I do? I say, God, if it's something, if I, I say, okay, if there's a, a um, I was afraid that the person was afraid, and I said, God, when that came to me, and it kind of touched my mom's strings, you know, and then I said, God, help them right there. Give them strength right there. Comfort them right there, Lord God. I said, Father, I rebuke the spirit of fear. I said, God, send some people in to begin to minister to them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. I got goodness. I, I got goodness. I got grace and mercy beside me. I got grace and mercy following me, going before me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So once a person becomes a believer, they have that too. Near them, following them, and even going before them. Amen. I like what this one commentator, he painted this image of, of God's mercy outrunning our necessities. I'm t man, Pastor Sanchez, that right there, to know that, let that sink into your spirit, that God's mercy will outrun your necessities. Yeah. Yeah, I'll further say that God's grace and mercy outruns our sins. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to tell you, I know. 
Y'all just so quiet. Let me look over my glasses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, God know y'all. So y'all, if y'all see him, y'all don't think I know him? Okay, all right. That's this. said, we know. Come on. We, we ain't going to say much. We know. I'm just transparent. I know it. And so, therefore, you know, I'm just like, God, I got to have your grace and your mercy because, God, I just, I need to walk in your authority today. I don't need to let anything hinder me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ooh, God, I want to trust you always. And I know that there are some things in this world that have come up to try to distract you from trusting him. Yeah, yeah. So, so, okay, so, so in fact, I believe the reason God has extended himself to follow and be with us in this extension of his grace and mercy is because he anticipates our needs and our wrongdoings. Yeah. So, he's given us this, this love and covering and protection. He says, Stephanie's going to need it. She's going to need it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's trapped in humanity for a season. Glory to God. And because she's down there in that flesh, I know I've got to give her some grace and some mercy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Otherwise, we wouldn't even need his grace and mercy following us and covering us if, if, if we didn't have these needs and wrongdoings. Uh-huh. Yes, I heard Brother Hull said, right. <laughs> Amen. That's because of his grace and his mercy. Christians should be a repentive people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A people with a spirit of humility. Because we cannot redeem ourselves or wash away our own sins. And, and, and even our errors. We can't correct our own errors. You know, it takes the Holy Spirit still to deal with us and say, oh, wait a minute, no. You need to go back on that one now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Only by God's grace and mercy can we be redeemed. He's given us this long arm of protection. Yeah. Because grace and mercy is this extension of him. And he's, he's stretched forth his hand and his arm toward us, and he's given us this long arm of protection to even protect our salvation. Yeah. He's concerned about my sanctified walk. Yeah. People be concerned about it. Okay. <laughs> People be concerned. People be concerned about how you're living, you know. They're concerned about how, how you're holding up. How you're holding up as a Christian. Y'all yeah. ain't finna laugh with me. But y'all don't know, uh, what's that singer name? I can't remember his name right now, but he used to say that the uh, church mothers used to, every week, at the, when he come back to Sunday service, they would always say, you still holding on? And then he'd say, yes, mother. She said, keep on keeping on, baby. She, she thought he was going to lose his salvation from Sunday to Sunday. <laughs> I said, he, he must not have showed us some things were sanctified, you know, to put a, got her worried like that. <laughs> yeah. So, y'all remembering these, these, this, this, the definitions and things I gave you of grace? Don't forget those things now. Now, I'm going to share with you a little bit about mercy. We're still going to get to the question. But this is some great groundwork to understanding it. Who are the least of these? We can define mercy as having pity, compassion, Loving kindness, that's that, that's that hyphenated one. Kindness or good, excuse me, kindness or goodwill toward the miserable and afflicted. Yeah. Joined with a desire to relieve them. Yeah. I'm just not having pity on you, Dylan. No, I'm teasing. I'm not just having pity, you know, on a person. It's joined with wanting to relieve them of their miserable situation or their affliction. Amen. We, we're being called to do this. See, this message came before all of that, so I'm seeing that we are being called to do this. Yep, y'all keep that in mind. 
Amen. Clemency of God in providing offering, providing or offering to mankind salvation by Christ. This, we're still talking about mercy. And mercy is forgiveness. Wow, wow, wow. Aren't we blessed to assume all of these things from our Father? Yeah. This, that's a worship song in itself right there. I mean, when you get to thinking about all the grace and, and the mercy and the things that come along, what that really means, that can push you into worship. Mm. Hallelujah. Grace and mercy are tools of protection from God. Who Jude says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory to the only wise God our Savior, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. There's grace and mercy that can prevent you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. That's not my power. That's not your individual power. Yeah. That's God's power. And he's, he's provided this provision for us. He said, I've got grace right here and I've got mercy right here because I'm trying to get you there. I want to present you faultless. So I'm going to give some tools so I can make this happen. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, so I told y'all that grace and mercy is standing with me right now. Do you believe that grace and mercy is next to you, all the believers? Yes, 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 yes. And if you don't believe that, when we do the altar call, I want you to come up. Because believers should want it for somebody else. Amen. Amen. It's comforting to know that God has leaned in toward us and extended his hand to us. The fact that grace and mercy follows us when we enter into painful situations, when you're hurting and broken, when you're feeling like weeping and just crying all day long because something is troubling you. Glory to God. Yeah, when men begin to internalize things because they don't want to, to show their tears, but they're hurting or they're sad that their family's hurting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grace and mercy is right there. When you enter into dark places, when your reality changes from a calm situation and happy to some type of confusion and chaos that is entered in, glory to God, hallelujah. They follow you into, into any troubling situation and take you through these troubling situations. If you are a believer, I want you to think about what is the worst thing that you feel like has happened to you, the toughest situation that you've gone through. Think about that. Just take a moment and think about whatever was the hardest thing that you had to endure. Even the young people can begin to think, because uh, some young people done went through some stuff. They done, they done had some stuff that kind of pricked their emotions and everything and things that they had to deal with and grow from. There may be some people in here now that are, I'm not even going to say may, because I heard the Holy Spirit. There is somebody in here right now that's going through a tough situation that they feel like is, is very hard and one of the hardest things that they've gone through. Yeah, yeah. Know that grace and mercy are in the darkness with us. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we come out or are coming out, we've came out of these situations or we're still coming out of these situations because of grace and mercy's persistent, persistence. They are part of God's stubborn love for us. Mm. His relentless will to be sovereign in our lives. Because at some point, as a believer, we've surrendered to him. And we've accepted him. 
So when we go through these, go through a tough situation, he doesn't leave us alone. Even when we're trying to battle the situation alone and we'd have forgot that we've got grace and mercy right here. And we're trying to deal with this thing by ourselves. Or we're trying to help somebody else go through and then it's pulling us in too. Mm. He doesn't give up on us. He is faithful to his covenant with us. Because of God's grace toward us, he extends. So, so here's the thing. Here's how it works. So because of God's grace toward us, he extends mercy. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. So grace produces mercy. God's extension of grace and mercy prevents us from getting what we truly deserve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, when we were all in that, I could say in that real sin, okay, when we all was in sin before we gave our lives to the Lord, you know, what we really deserved was death. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even as we are in this walk with the Lord, there are some things, sometimes we do some things that we have been disobedient to God but God has, dis- has, has uh, hung with us and, and, and because of his love for us, decided I'm not going to cut them off. So I'm not going to give them this death while I cut them off from me. Right. Believe me when I say God looks down and sees his grace and mercy. He sees his grace and mercy with me. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said that's why I got it there. So, Stephanie, you can, you can repent. You can fix this thing. You can, you can turn your heart back to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. So, remember, whatever situation that we find ourselves in, either it's on our, whether it's on our own accord or simply because of causes of life or the, the, of course, you know, the enemy comes to definitely distract us. It could always be worse, but because of God's grace and mercy. Let's talk about who needs mercy. Who needs mercy? Who needs grace? Excuse me. Who needs grace and mercy? Who needs grace and mercy? Now we said, so the the title of the message is, who are the least of these? Yeah. Yeah. Who needs God's unrelenting covering? I want you to think about this. Think about this for yourselves in here. Who has ever been miserable and afflicted and in need of compassion? Y'all just just raise your hand. If this hits you anywhere, it's okay. It's just us. Okay. Yeah. I mean, no, seriously. If, if you've ever been miserable, if you've ever been afflicted, if you've ever needed compassion, favor, kindness, forgiveness, two people needed it, three people, amen, four or five, okay, they popping up a little bit. I might get a little, pastor might have to get a little note if every hand don't go up. I'm going to be like, pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Some people in that pastor don't believe that they were saved because of God's grace and mercy. <laughs> Amen. It's only because of his grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if we've all needed that, yeah. Raise your hand again. Let me see these hands again. Amen. Okay. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. One up there in the top. Yeah, okay, hands up. <laughs> Amen. Then let me tell you that you are among the least of these. If you needed any of this grace and mercy, any of it, if you needed forgiveness, the salvation of Christ, if you needed compassion, kindness, you are among the least of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We have our images, kind of what we think the least of these are supposed to look like. Hold a mirror. Yes, God. Because we've got to have a repentive heart and a spirit of humility. I'm among the least of these. Yeah. Yeah. We need all of these things collectively that's a part of God's grace and mercy. I need it all. Matthew 35 through 40 talks about helping those who are the hungry, the thirsty, the homeless, the unclothed, the sick, and the imprisoned among you. And basically, we are to extend love to the weak or the vulnerable and the marginalized. I make the case today that believers are among this group. Yeah. Yeah. It's only by God's grace and mercy that, that we have power when we're weak and strength, when it, it, that our strength increases when our flesh is ready to give up. You can look that up. Isaiah 40, 29 and 31 tells you that. Yeah. I want to remind us that if it had not been for the Lord, okay, on our side, <laughs> Yeah. The scripture says the enemy would have overtaken us. And I'm going to tell you this because it, I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to bring it home. Your situations would have overtaken you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My past would have overtaken me when I was a kid if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. When I was standing up there, and I was 15 years old, and I'm standing on the, on the sidewalk. We had gotten home from school, and I'm standing there with a few friends and stuff. I didn't really have to have a curfew because I was the type of kid that came in and things like that. But this was broad daylight, broad daylight. And I see a friend that's a friend of my uncle's. One of my uncles is only 11 months older than me, so we were raised kind of, you know, close, like we were sister and brother in a sense. And uh, I see his friend come up, and I was like, what are you doing over here? Because I was on the north side, and I knew he lived on, on, on Little Rock. So I was like, what are you doing over here? And he came up to me, and he whispered in my ear, and he said, go home. And I said, part of me wanted to be like, you don't tell me what to do, right? So I was like, I said, I did look like that. But I don't know, something, the Holy Spirit st stood up inside of me and said, you might need to listen to him, you know. And so I turned, he walked off, he said, he said it again, and then he said, okay. And he walked off, and I turned around as I was getting backing up to get ready to go to the house. And I turned and I looked, and he walked up to a friend of ours that was a sweet guy in the community, he had just started school at Philander Smith College and everything, put the gun to his head, blew his brains out. When he did it, he said, I'm sorry, and he called his name. Blew his brains out right there, and I see him splattered on the sidewalk. But God. So the next day at school, of course, you know, everybody's getting counseling and everything. I look back and I just know it was God. You know what I mean? I mean, I had, to, I had a, a, a sense of going home and to pray about this. And, and as I'm walking and I'm praying and everything, that was God. God kept my mind during that situation. I would love to say that was only one. But I could tell you about some drive-bys too. Yeah, yeah. I did almost get my parents killed in a drive-by. Yes, now y'all see why, why, why I'm so loving toward people, because God has forgiven much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and I wasn't this real, like, crazy kid that, you know, that got into trouble or nothing like that, straight A's, got a scholarship to college, all that type of good stuff. But uh, I wasn't in the environment that, that, you know, would allow me to be out late, you know. And I remember I was coming from the a lady's house that I was babysitting for, and, and I was supposed to have been home like an hour earlier. And this was the type of situation that like both parents had to walk. Your mama couldn't come and get you. 
So your mom and your daddy had to come. Okay. So here they come. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all just kind of looking at me like that. That's okay, because I'm, I'm going to give y'all some lessons on grace and mercy. <laughs> so anyway, but they come, they came to get me, and they were really upset with me because I had stayed longer than I was supposed to. You got to get home when your parents tell you to come home. I stayed longer than what I was supposed to, and I put them in danger because as they were coming up to get me, there was a drive-by. And I tell you what, I never will forget it because that pierced my heart so, you know, I just really felt so, I, I felt like I'd have been responsible, you know, and I'm a kid. And so that would have damaged me, I think, for a while. But God's grace and mercy, the bullet hit the window, hit the, hit the side of a house. They ducked down under the stairwell and um, everything got quiet and we were able to, uh, to go home. It taught me some stuff, boy, I tell you. You ought to listen to your parents. It's real important. Yeah. So, yes, every, every time I get up here, I reveal a little bit more about me. For all these folks that don't come to rejoice recovery. <laughs> yeah, so, so anyway, so I'm among the least of these. Yes, we all are. And then I got to Matthew 35. Y'all, so y'all bear with me now because, see, I got to look down here. So Isaiah, we did Isaiah 40, 29 to 30. This time y'all supposed to laugh and say, she's so funny. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so Isaiah 40, 29 through 1. Okay, no, let's go to, um, let's go to Matthew 25, chapter 25. There you go. Yeah, so Matthew chapter 25. And we read verse 40. And the king, who is the son of man, will answer and say to them, Or surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. This text has a dual meaning. Yes, Jesus wants us to help those in need. But I believe, my brethren, as we're called in verse 40, that he is communicating to us today that because of God's grace and mercy, we have, prov that we, that because of God's grace and mercy, we have the provisions that we have. We have the provisions for food and water and clothes and shelter and healing. And these are the things that he even identified uh, in this example. And his grace and mercy follows us into situations that are designed to bind us and, and to, hold up, to hold our faith hostage. And situations that are designed to imprison us. Yeah. Let me read this so y'all can see where I got this from, right? Okay. So, verse 32. So, now this is Jesus talking to his disciples and everything. And so, he had just done the parable of um, the talents, and we're going to come back to that. He's got a couple of days before, you know, he goes to the cross and everything. And he says, all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will, he will separate them Let's go to 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another. As the shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And that's the part we're going to focus on. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. 
I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did, you, then when did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. And we're going to stop right there. What Jesus has required of his sheep in this discourse is for them to extend the same grace and mercy that he has extended to them. And this might, this, this, this might be challenging to think about it a little differently than you commonly read these scriptures. But I'm going to challenge you. And to take this a step further, the righteous that Jesus, Jesus mentions in verse 37 was already extending grace and mercy. They were already doing it. I'm going to show this to you. Okay. It says, verse 37 says, Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? Then they continued, then they continued asking more questions. But they say, when did we see you doing these things, right? So when did, they, when did they do all, excuse me, when did they do all the provisions that grace and mercy produces? These are the provisions that grace and mercy produces, okay? It's going to produce, it's going to push you. Grace and mercy is going to call you to want to make sure that needs are being met. So, so when, you're, when you've got the weak among you and the vulnerable among you and you see a need, grace and mercy is going to push you to want to help with that need, right? We don't just have pity, remember? Yeah, yeah. We, we have the desire to help relieve some of the issues, some of the stress and the distress that the person may be going through. Yeah. So with them not knowing when, when they did all of these tasks, okay, because they asked about this. So this leads me to believe that grace and mercy was a part of their spiritual makeup that they had already, I'm talking about the righteous now, in verse 37, okay, that they had already accepted the grace and mercy that God had extended, okay? So they were operating in this. They were operating in this grace and mercy, doing these things. Are, are y'all with me? Okay, 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 all right, okay, thank you, okay. Thank y'all, y'all so sweet. Okay, so and if you notice, so Jesus began this example describing how the shepherd separated the sheep from the goats. Now, he did that before he shared what standards they were being separated by. You, you see what I'm saying? Okay, so he will separate. So he says, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goat, and he says, and he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goat's on his left hand, okay? Now, either one could have thought they was all just happy, the goat's having a good time on the left and smiling and cheesing. Yes, I'm on the left hand, you know, of the master. And yes, the, the sheep is, oh yes, I'm on the right hand. Because neither one of them knew the standards which God, that Jesus was using to determine where they were going to be. Do you, you, you see my point with this? But yet they were operating in it. Y'all ain't with me. Y'all ain't with me. Y'all ain't, y'all with me? They were operating in this grace and mercy. So they was, so here God extended the grace and mercy, which means then they realized their role under God. They knew then that he was the one that was sovereign and we were the one in need. Does that mean that, he, that, that I was the one in need and that God is God, so I'm accepting his, his, his grace and mercy as he's putting it on my life and ministering through the Holy Spirit to me as people are coming, as y'all got, I'm standing here preaching, okay, and so, and accepting this. 
Does this make sense? Yes. And this got into their heart, in their spirit, and now they walking that thing out. Are y'all getting this? So they walking out this grace and mercy. They're operating in the grace and mercy. What, what Christ is extending to them and what he extends to us, he expects us to extend it to others. Amen. Amen. So, okay, so did, did y'all get that? Pray for me. I told you to pray for me on that, didn't I? Okay, I said I told you to pray for me on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so I believe that this text makes, because I could go back because I said all of that, so I'm just trying to look to make sure because I needed to read it to make sure I didn't leave nothing out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you, Lord. So I believe that this text makes a correlation between how we operate in grace and mercy. It, it correlates with our salvation. Yeah. I gather from the text that being a believer requires us to operate in grace and mercy. It's not optional. Yeah. Amen. Amen. One reason is because we need the grace and mercy ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And the second reason is because it is an extension of Jesus, who is the true shepherd and king. Yeah. So we are fortunate to have, okay, so this is my section that says there's a believer, so we're moving on. See, we're getting through. I'm not going to be long-winded, right? So we're fortunate in this church to have some, uh, some, some, some leaders, and I was listening to Phil, and I said, you know, that was my same sentiment, you know, to have some leaders and members and, and this great body who understand a need for grace and mercy. Yeah, a personal need. Amen. Yeah. They understand that without God, we understand that without God, we are nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And most folks uh, in here understand how the extension works. That God leans into us and extends grace and mercy to be with us. And then we extend the same grace and mercy to other believers and non-believers who need it. Believers should want others to experience God's grace and mercy too. Amen gift that's given to us and it's supposed to be the gift that keeps on giving yeah Yeah. so let's talk about the the parable of the talents because I'm taking y'all backwards because really I just saw this thing in a in a different light you know they they connect so much um y'all can read that one at home if you like I'm gonna sum it up for you so there was a master getting ready to travel a farm um make sure I have my pages right He was getting ready to go to a far country, and he called these three servants together. And I imagine since he called these three, they must have been, there must have been something special about them. You know, he called these three servants together. Maybe they were the leaders. I don't know. And the goal was uh, for him to give them a set of goods. And then they were to turn those goods into an increase. Everybody said Christians should produce. Yeah, one person believes it. Yeah, yeah. Christians should produce. Thank you so much, Phil. Yes, I got a witness over there. Can I get a witness? Okay. <laughs> Amen. So, so he gave them uh, these goods according to their ability. One received five talents. The other received two talents. And then the third one received one talent. Now, I've heard this parable delivered several ways. Some people refer to the talents as money. Some refer to them as gifts or whatever, your spiritual gifts, all of those good things. Yeah. I'm going to ask you guys to consider the talents as souls. Okay. I'm going to get you there. God has given us grace and mercy to produce souls for the kingdom. Mm-hmm. 
me out. Notice that, that this part of the text precedes the example about the sheep and the goats. He did the dividing after he had uh, set them up to be able to produce. Does that make sense? Okay. So when the master returned, the servant with the five talents, he had an increase. The servant with the two talents, he had an increase. But the servant with the one talent had no increase. I might be able to win five souls. You might be able to win two souls. But none of us should come up empty-handed. Everybody, every believer should produce. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all get that? That really was a place to holler. That really was a place to holler. You are expected to produce. You, you, have, you have God's grace and mercy on you. You are expected to produce. There are souls assigned to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're not, we don't do worship for, for no reason. When you're up here doing worship, I, I don't know if, if you hadn't told me this, but I believe in my heart that he believes that he's drawing, that he's trying to draw people in. He's trying to, to present Christ to people so that they can see Christ, and if they need to surrender, they know Christ is available. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So none of us are expected to be unprofitable. God knows each of our abilities, but he has grace and mercy following us. Our abilities may vary. But a believer has no excuse for not producing fruit. Yeah. He wants us to pour grace and mercy into others instead of tucking them. Because what the, what, the what the one talent did, so he didn't produce anything because he dug a hole and he, he planted it, right? So God don't want us to, to, to uh, tuck away this grace and mercy and because we're afraid or inconvenienced or whatever our reasons, you know, whatever, uh, sometimes they become excuses. Reasons and excuses can be different, right? Yeah, sometimes they can overlap. Yeah, yeah. He's expecting us to produce. Yeah. So, lastly, what we see at the end of either of these stories is that the people are judged for their actions. Yeah. We're being set up for an opportunity to produce. Amen. Yeah. So who is righteous enough to stand before God and declare that they have done everything that God has required of them in the manner that God has required it done? Let me see your hand. Okay, we got one kid. He might work. Stephen, you, I don't know Stephen. I'm your mama. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think any of us, you know, are, are uh, except him. And none of the rest of us, uh, big folks especially, I guess, are righteous enough to stand before God. My righteousness before God is like filthy rags. This is something the scripture don't even have to tell me. I already know. I already know. I know that I am clean because of him. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll be the first to say, not me. I am among the least of these. I need God's grace and mercy to follow me throughout my days. Yeah just as David declared. Believers can't see themselves above others that they are counting in this list of the least of these groups. Yeah, I can't say that I'm above anybody, you know. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, if I wanted to, well, I ain't going to go there, but we'll go. I, well, I'm going to say this. I'm going to put my little pen right there so I don't lose my spot. But if we wanted to talk on the natural side of this and if, if, if I was more blessed in someone than somebody else and I see their need, I'm required to respond. Yeah. Instead of looking over and be like, well, I sure wish they'd buy her some more glasses. 
<laughs> you know, hey man, you see the need? Let your grace and mercy operate in you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus found himself sitting among those who religious folks in society had qualified as the least of these. The scribes and the Pharisees did not realize their own need for Christ. In an effort to walk in the grace and mercy that God has extended to us, that we might point someone else to the cross, as a body of believers, we should find ourselves sitting among those that struggle to know Jesus and those that religion and society has qualified as the least of these. Mm. Hallelujah. Can't believe I'm finna close. <laughs> Thank you, Father. So I close with this. What's our mission? That was a question. <laughs> Somebody can say it. What's our mission? What's our church mission? To know him and to make him known. That's, that, that's our stamp. So we're facing some stuff. You know, I'm just throwing this in here because that wasn't part of the message. But, but it, my message came before all this other stuff came. Hallelujah. So God just confirmed some stuff. We're facing some, some decisions that we're going to have to make. Yeah, I don't know if I get to vote or not. I got my thing in January. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So we, we are facing some, some, some things. And our stamp says that our mission is to know God and to make him known. Thank you, Lord. We should be, because we are one of the least of these, we should welcome anybody else that fits into that category. And I'll tell you tonight that that's everybody else. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want to pray. Hallelujah. I think we should pray. I think we should pray. Y'all want to pray? I love talking to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is how I get everything out, Billy. I just talk to God. Hallelujah. Yes, that song said, tell him all about your troubles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I got a ear that's not too heavy. Glory to God. He can hear all of my situations. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. He knows my problems. Whether I've, I've told you guys or not, God knows everything that's going on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He knows me inside and out. Mm. This was such a personal message for a collective body that's bringing us into this, this big group thing where we're all going to be working together in this church as one body. Yeah. But there's a requirement, glory to God, that we have to take this thing personally, glory to God, and even ask the Lord, God, am I, am I operating in this grace and this mercy? something of you that you don't think you're ready for. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. That you may not have all the answers to. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. Woo. Mm. I challenge you that when you get to those places that you remember the grace that's on your left side and the mercy that's on your right side. Hallelujah. Yes, God. 
that this same grace and mercy was extended to you. And if you have been troubled, releasing it to someone else, to help someone else, to point someone else to the cross, that's the time where you say, God, help me. Thank you, Lord. thing that fights against us. But I declare that it's a good tool. 
because everything that God created is good. It's your free will. There is power when you use your free will to step forth to an open God who's willing and ready to receive. Thank you. Any problem that we might have, Thank you for stretching out in the sky. 